Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome back into the Color Gemstone Academy. I am your instructor, Paul DC. This is my YouTube channel, Paul DC Gemstones. Thank you for tuning in. As, as of this taping, we are closing in ever so fast on 1,600 subscribers. So I want to thank each and every one of you who have already subscribed. If you are watching and have not yet subscribed, please subscribe. It, it doesn't cost you a penny. It's completely free. But my goal, again, is to be the biggest free gem classes every week on YouTube. And with your help, I think we can get there. Well, today's lesson, and I think this is episode 61 now we're up to, is one of my unsung heroes in the gem industry. It is called Malachite. That will be our episode 61. <clears throat> Um, why do I call it an unsung hero? First of all, there's not a lot of green gemstones out there, especially in the opaques. And this one is really, really just stunning. I mean, you can see what this looks like. And then here's a little egg of a malachite specimen. Here's another one that I bought when I was out at the Tucson Gem Show. And this one comes from the Democratic Republic of the Congo, one of the big suppliers of malachite in the world. But its history dates back to 4,000 BC. That means over 6,000 years ago, this gemstone was being mined and enjoyed by the Egyptians and they used it in jewelry. The name Malachite comes from a Greek word, which is Malachite. Don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but you can see the spelling on your screen right there, uh, which means mallow. And this is an apparent reference to a, an herb or a plant that had dark green leaves. So they equated this dark green malachite or mallow from the leaves of that, that, uh, that plant. Uh, so of course, you know that I, I like to give you some of the vital statistics about the stone so that you can compare and contrast with other gems that are similar or completely different. And the chemical composition, it is a copper carbonate hydroxide. So you can see all of those elements that make this up. Uh, the crystal structure would be considered monoclinic. Then we get to that Mohs scale of hardness. Remember the Mohs scale of hardness is literally the ability of one gem to scratch another gem. It goes one through 10, one being talc, 10 being a diamond. Well, this one comes in at four. So not the hardest means it could be scratched rather easily by anything with a hardness higher than four. Um, but it's still good for wearing in jewelry because in its, in its cabochon form, in its compressed form, after years and years being in the earth, it's certainly something you can wear every single day. The toughness, however, is considered poor. So toughness means the ability to crack and chip. So it doesn't require any special care but you'll often see this in a setting that would be more of a uh, cabochon setting, not really a prong type setting. So refractive index that talks about the sparkle of the gemstone is 1.6, I'm sorry, 1.85, not known really for its sparkle. Again, it's known for its color. You can see a beautiful pair of earrings here, and, and you can actually see how it the light is reflecting off of the surface of this. So it's definitely hard enough to reflect the light off of the surface of this. Now, then, now we get into the specific gravity, which would be what we call the heft. How heavy does the stone feel con compared to the size? And it's relatively up there. It's 3.8. As you know, when we talk about um, sapphire and ruby, that's a 4 on the specific gravity, this is almost the same density that you would find in a sapphire or a ruby. Okay, now where are the sources? Where can you find, where can you find malachite? Well, malachite is found wherever copper is mined. So when we think about big copper producing countries, you're gonna find that. If we think about, well, the United States and the Southwest, all of that copper with all of the turquoise mines that I talked about, that's also where you're going to find the malachite. That's where the green color comes from. Uh, where else? Australia, China, big producer of turquoise. Yep, you're gonna see some uh, malachite out of China as well. Russia, uh, same thing, copper mining in Russia. You're gonna see 
malachite there. And one of the bigger uh, uh, suppliers, and I told you that when I was at the Tucson Gem Show, I bought this, and this came from the formerly, it was Zaire, it's now called the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Uh, that is a, a big supplier of the malachite. Okay, now what about the folklore and legends associated with malachite? Well, they say that when uh, an infant is born, if you put some malachite on the, uh, kind of attach it to the cradle of the infant, then it would hold e all evil spirits at bay and the child would sleep soundly and peacefully. Now, I wish I had known this when my kids were born because they weren't the most peaceful sleepers, especially my son Kyle when he was very little and I was working the night shift as a, a shopping <laughs> channel host. And uh, so I worked at all hours and I, I just did not want him to wake up. And I felt like if I was even walking on a carpet in socks, he would wake up. So he could have used some, uh, some of this malachite magic. Uh, another one <laughs> is also said that if you engrave the image of the sun on the surface of the stone, it would protect the wearer from enchantments, evil spirits, and from attacks of venomous creatures. Well, that's really specific. Now, of course, I don't know if any of those things are true, but I always say, before we make fun of all of these uh, folklore and legends uh, from 6,000 years ago, we have to remember that science wasn't what it is today. So if you picked up a rock like this and you saw these beautiful striations and you thought there must be some magical powers in this, it's not just a pretty rock. So I give them a pass on their folklore and legends. Okay, so how about the cost? I mean, what, what, is, what is malachite going to go for when you're in the market for malachite? Well, malachite is not necessarily a rare gemstone. I said it's found, you know, where a lot of copper could be found. But prices can fluctuate on this wildly depending upon the prices of copper. Now, not to get all economics nerdy with you, if any, if any of you can remember all the way back, or maybe if you're new, you can go back and watch on the, um, the Gemstone Academy, the lessons from the very beginning. And lesson one was, what does it take to be a good gemologist? And I explained in that lesson that you need to know a lot more than just the, comp the chemical composition of the stone or where it comes from, or where it's mined. Um, you need to know a lot more things to be a, a gemologist. So... Let's talk about what you need to know about this more than just the chemical composition. Okay, economics. What is economics? Economics is a study of how does mankind, or am I supposed to say person kind these days? <laughs> well, I'm not going to have that fight right now. Um, one of the basic uh, principles of, is, of economics is supply and demand. If there's not a big supply and there's a demand, the prices go up. If there's a really big supply and not much demand, the prices go down. Um, and another tenant I always talk about in economics is what causes inflation? Well, that's when you have too many dollars chasing too few goods and services. And that means the prices will go up and that's what we call inflation. Now, I know I'm getting to a point and I know you're wondering why you're giving me all this economics nerd. Um, well, it's because it's really important today because it will affect the price of the malachite. And hear me out. Any time that we have inflation, and right now our country is experiencing inflation. Uh, the, the example happened with the, that pipeline being hacked and it interrupted the supply of gas. The prices went up, people were waiting in lines. All of that happens. The other thing that happens during a time of inflation, and look it up any time, uh, precious metals and metals in general go up. If you look at what happened to silver and gold this year, uh, silver's up, gold's up, but what you may not realize is copper is up. In fact, copper is at the highest price it's been in a decade. Okay, so why am I bringing all of this up? Because I know what you're thinking. Okay, so the price of copper is up, I think it's uh, this year over 460 a pound. You're saying, well, that's not a lot because that's 
you know, silver and gold are much more rare than that. But copper is used a lot in construction. And right now the housing market's going crazy. Um, look at the prices of real estate. There's more building going on, especially in certain states that people are moving to. And all of this affects the price of copper. So it's at a 10 year high. So you're probably thinking, well, that's good, right, Paul? Because if the copper's higher, they're going to mine for more copper. And if they mine for more copper, you're going to find more malachite, right? Well, no, that's not actually true because you have to understand how uh, copper is mined and how malachite is mined. So copper, much like nickel, isn't really a price per ounce. It's a price per pound, but they mine an awful lot of it. They have huge earth moving machines and they're getting as much copper as they can. And they, they can make millions of dollars, but they have to mine a lot of it to do that. And you're saying, okay, great. So they're mining it. They're sh certainly going to run into more of that malachite. That means we'll have more malachite, right? No, that's not true either. When they're mining with these big earth moving machines, they're not going to bother to stop and say, oh, look at that pretty rock of green there. No, they're getting paid by how much copper they can put together and put out. And even if they do stop and they won't, they take those rocks, all those rocks get crushed and then it gets put into a smelter because they're recovering the copper, even the copper that exists in that malachite stone. So now what do you have? Less of a supply of malachite. A demand that still wants the malachite, the prices are going to inevitably go up. So I know that was a little bit of a nerdy economics lesson, but I really need you to understand what does affect the price of gemstones. I gave another example, ironically, with another green gemstone, um, and that would be the chrome diopside. This is way back in our what does it take to be a good gemologist. Um, things like geopolitical concerns can affect the price of a gemstone. So, for example, if we as the United States put sanctions on a country like Russia, that affects our ability to be able to do business with Russia to get the mined, uh, mined uh, chrome dioxide out of Siberia and into the show over at the Tucson Gem Show. Makes it more scarce, the prices go up. Well, that's going to be my end of this lesson on uh, 61, which is malachite. I, I really think it's a great, still relatively affordable stone despite the price of copper right now. You can get some great looking uh, malachite. And, uh, and that's it. If you have any questions about it, I can cover that on my question and answer series, which happens every single Wednesday at 5 p.m. And of course, each gem lesson like this one uh, drops at 10 a.m. Eastern time here in the United States. Now, remember, if you have not yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you a penny, but it helps me to keep do these lessons for you for free. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time, everybody, on the Colored Gemstone Academy.